from Hollywood, the Judy Canova Show. <laughs> Brought to you each week by the Colgate Palm Olive Pete Company, makers of Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. And the new 1948 Super Suds with extra suds for extra fighting. The Judy Canova Show with Mel Blanc, Ruby Dandridge, Joe Kearns, Ruth Perrett, Gail Gordon, Alan Reed, The Sportsman, Charles Danton, his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. It's easy, so easy, so easy to do. To make him say, see, see, just when he won't agree, is very easy. It's easy. When you know how It's easy, so easy, so easy to do To get a kiss or two When he refuses you Is very easy It's easy When you know how And if he says no, no To your many charms Move a little closer Then you're in his arms so follow him, my friend, until the very end To make him love you It's easy When you know how It's easy, so easy, so easy to do It's easy When you know how Well, if you were an important radio star, you'd probably buy every newspaper you could get your hands on in order to see if your name or your picture was in it. For instance, the other day, I was out at Judy's house, and she was clipping publicity items for her scrapbook. Howard, look at this newspaper item about me. I think it's terrible. Well, what does it say, Judy? It says, Judy Canova rose from mighty circumstances to her present position. She is entirely a self-made girl. Huh. <laughs> Well, what's so terrible about that? Aren't you a self-made girl? If I was self-made, do you think I'd put myself together like this? <laughs> you know something, Howard? I'm just having an awful time finding my picture in any of these newspapers. Oh, but, Judy, here's your picture right here. What's wrong with this? Oh, the picture's all right, but to put it in with an auto repair ad. <laughs> look, just, just, just look what it says under my picture. Look at that. If your chassis is twisted... And your bumper is out of shape. Don't be discouraged. Look what we did for this hopeless wreck. <laughs> Howard, I'm getting more and more convinced that that Breezy Jones, my press agent, don't get me the right kind of publicity. Ah, oh, but Judy, didn't he pull a big publicity stunt for you last week? Well, he had me drive a car in downtown Los Angeles with a blindfold over my eyes so I couldn't see where I was going. Well, didn't you attract a lot of attention? Nobody even noticed me. I drove just like the rest of the Los Angeles drivers. <laughs> Say, by the way, Howard, Breezy Jones is coming over today to take some more publicity pictures. Oh, well, then you probably want to get yourself fixed up, Judy, so I'll run along. See you later. Bye, Howard. Geranium. Oh, Geranium. Yeah, Miss Judy. Geranium, I want to get as glamorous as I can for some publicity pictures. Would you fix me up? Miss Judy, I've got the glamour stuff right here. Well, shoot it to me. Yeah, it's a bottle of skin beautifier called La Jure L'Amour Hubba Hubba Griffith Park. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me now, does it really do the trick, Geranium? Does it? Honey says right here on this bottle, a small portion of this lotion gives your man oceans of emotional notions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll try some later, Geranium. Right now, I want you to put some of them invisible hairpins in my hair. Did you get some? I sure did, Miss Judy. Well, now, are you sure they're invisible? Invisible? <laughs> Honey, the man at the store said they'd been out of them for three weeks and he's still selling them. <laughs> <laughs> Geranium, I sure hope that press agent has got some good ideas for publicity this time. Say, you know, Miss Judy, I got a lot of publicity once done a stunt on a radio quiz program. Yeah, I was a flagpole sitter. No fooling. Yeah, honey. 
I sure look funny sitting up there on that pole for three days. <laughs> I bet you did. Yeah, a little boy came along. He said, look, Mama, that blimp is still fastened to the mooring mast. <laughs> What the world is all that hammering about? Oh, it's Pedro. He's on that ladder right outside your window. Well, you run along and get my hat, so I'll be ready for the publicity pictures. I'm going to open the window and find out what Pedro's doing. Pedro! Oh, Pedro! Pardon me for talking in your face, Senorita. <laughs> Pedro, Pedro, what are you doing up there on that ladder? Well, Senorita, I am putting up a radio aerial so I can hear your program better. Oh, well, that's nice. That's nice, but why are you hammering so hard? No nails. <laughs> well, Senorita, are you going to be on a television? Mm, could be. Why? Well, I am saving up all my money to buy a television set. Golly, it's got me all excited. You mean you can't wait to see what those wrestlers do when they get a man in the ring? No, I can't wait to see what Dr. IQ does when he gets a lady in a balcony. <laughs> Senorita, I sure like to listen to your radio program. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, Paige. I even made up a little poem. Maybe you can use it. A poem? How does it go? Like this. Mary had a little skunk. Its fleece was black as ink. And when she brought it into school, it caused an awful lot of trouble. Oh, thanks, Pedro. I'll use it some night when I want to get off the air in a hurry. Well, I am all through my work now, so I will go for my lunch. Esta mañana. A tasty banana to you too, Pedro. <laughs> Mr. Breezy Jones is here to see you. Never mind introducing me, Toots. I'm already in. Hello, sweetheart. I brought over your press clip. And, sweetheart, they love you. They love you all over the country. Ah, uh, you're just the fella I Davey, want... look at the publicity break for you. Quote, the opening premiere of Archer Triumph drew a capacity crowd of Hollywood celebrities. When Lana Turner arrived, 20 photographers snacked their cameras. When Ingrid Bergman arrived, 30 photographers snapped their cameras. And when Judy Canova arrived... Two kids snapped their bubble gum. <laughs> yeah. Breezy, Breezy, why don't you give me publicity like the other stars get? Now look what it says here in the morning paper. Right here. Rita Hayworth has been attending the dog races at Meadowbrook where the surf meets the turf. And what does it say about you? Hmm. It says... Judy Canova has been going to the dogs at Tismo Beach, where the debris meets the sea. <laughs> Breezy, sometimes I think you don't know the first thing about publicity. Sweetheart, how can you say that? Why, I'm the man who made California oranges popular. You are not. You're not. My brother Zeke made California oranges popular. He worked at a place where they crated them. Well, how could he make California oranges popular? Well, every time he came to a bad one, he stamped it Florida. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mean trick, too. He got the idea in Florida. <laughs> yeah, he used to stamp Admiral Halsey on all the naval oranges. <laughs> Sweetheart, you're forgetting that terrific campaign I put on for you. Didn't I get you all them titles? What titles? Miss Avocado of 1947, the girl with the crooked stems. Uh, Miss Income Tax of 1948, just take a look at this complicated form and make your own deductions. Breezy, that's terrible publicity. Baby, you keep fighting me. I'm Breezy Jones, press agent. I'm no J. Gordon Manfield. Manfield? Who's he? Who is J. Gordon Manfield? That's what I said. Well, lady, he's only the greatest public relations counsel in the country. If it wasn't for him, half the thrones in Europe would have vacancy signs on them. When he made nylons popular, he put ten billion silkworms out of business. And just this year, he gave the women of America the new look. He raised men's curiosity by hiding what they like to see. <laughs> He did all that? Yeah, honey, and that ain't all. 
When he takes a client, he tells her what to say, what to wear, how to dress, and where to go. Well, then he's my boy. Oh, sweetheart, Jake Gordon Manfield wouldn't handle you for a million bucks. Get wise to yourself, baby. You've been getting by all this time without any S.A. at sex appeal. Yeah, and from now on, you're going to get by on your S.S. and U.I. What's that? Social Security and Unemployment Insurance. <laughs> Use Halo Shampoo if you want naturally bright and beautiful hair. Yes, soaping your hair with even finest liquid or cream shampoos hides its natural luster with dulling soap film. But Halo contains no soap. Made with a new patented ingredient, Halo cannot leave dulling film. Halo reveals the true color and brilliance of your hair the very first time you use it. Leaves it shimmering with glorious natural highlights. And even in hardest water, Halo makes oceans of rich, fragrant lather. Halo carries away loose dandruff and dirt like magic. Needs no lemon or vinegar rinses. Use Halo on your children's hair, too. Say hello to Halo Shampoo. Goodbye to dulling soap film. Get Halo at any cosmetic counter. And remember, soaping dulls hair, Halo glorifies it. So Halo, everybody, Halo. Halo Shampoo, Halo. because Judy is dissatisfied with the kind of publicity she's been getting, she's determined to see the famous public relations counsel, J. Gordon Manfield, and convince him that he should guide and manage her career. At the moment, Mr. Manfield's secretary is talking on the telephone in his office. Australia calling? Uh, sorry, Mr. Manfield is busy. London calling? Oh, sorry, he's talking to Moscow. What? Oh, just a moment, I'll see how long he's going to be. What's that? Товарищ, память явных воскресений, братцы студии, признает, да, 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 не построен, спасибо, вторник, нет, нет, нет. No, no, it's no use, Joe. I suggest you stay there in the Kremlin. Your act will never be popular here in America. <laughs> Mr. Manfield, London is calling. No more calls today, Miss Hickson. I can't seem to find the one type of client I want to handle. Just what are you looking for? Miss Hickson, I'm fed up with sprinkling stardust on gold-plated personalities. If only I could find someone real, someone without any affectation or superficiality. I'd pick her up and mold her as a sculptor would a piece of common clay. She must glow with the inner spark of talent, but above all, she must be genuine. She must ring true. Ah, if I could only find her. The one girl who is absolutely simple. Howdy, Mr. Manfield. <laughs> I'm sorry, miss. You're just a little too late. Mr. Manfield hired a scrub woman this morning. Oh, uh, don't worry, lady. I ain't gonna take your job away from you. <laughs> <laughs> Young woman, this is not a public thoroughfare. Is it your custom to march into a private office without an appointment? Well, Mr. Manfield, I know this is kind of informal-like, but I've been told I need a public relations counselor and that you're the best. See, I'm Judy Canova, and I've got a radio program of my own. Miss Canova, in coming here, you're wasting both your time and mine. I'm a very busy man. I accept very few clients. And what is more, I have never even heard your radio program. Oh, well, golly, you ought to listen to it. I sing a few songs and cut a few didos. <laughs> Cut a few didos. Yeah, a few didos. <laughs> I haven't heard that expression in 20 years. <laughs> well, I brung along a recording with me. Can I play it on that machine over there? Cut a few didos. <laughs> uh, uh, recording. Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead and play it if you like. This is the part where I sing. Put on a skillet, put on a lead. Mammy's going to make a little shopping bread. That ain't all she's going to do. Mammy's going to make a little coffee, too. Mammy's little baby love a short and short, and Mammy's little baby love a short and bread. Mammy's little baby love a short and short, and Mammy's little baby love a short and bread. Two little children laid in a bed. 
He's cracked up like chocolate bread. Biscuit good. Oh, but said. But I'm going to call about the chocolate bread. Man, little baby, double chocolate, and chocolate, man. Little baby, double chocolate, bread. Little baby, double chocolate, and chocolate, man. Little baby, double chocolate, and bread. Every night before I go on to bed, I run to the cupboard for my chocolate bread. Grandma goes and make a bed, but she's full of pepper making chocolate bread. Flip, flip. I like it hot. No, I like it cool. <laughs> I like it hot. I like it cold. I like it hot. I like it cold. Canova, did that come out of you? I you know think that so. was very good. I believe you have possibilities. I like your novel way of putting over a song. Have you ever been in pictures? Yeah, quite a few. Were they B pictures? B pictures? No, they's about people. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, once they wanted me to play in a picture opposite Dorothy Lamour. You? Opposite Dorothy Lamour? Yep, I was the most opposite thing they could find. <laughs> you see, Ms. And Hickson? they look, believe me. Yeah, they did. <laughs> oh, Miss Hickson, how unaffected she is. Frankly, Miss Canova, I'm interested in you. Oh, golly, that's swell. Now, uh, what else do you do on your radio program? Well, here, I'll play this record again. This here's the part in the show where I tell about Ma and Pa back home in Cactus Junction, you know. Yeah, usually Ma says to Pa, she says to him, Wake up, Paul. Wake up, you lazy critter. <laughs> oh, gosh, more. Paul, our woodshed is on fire. <laughs> well, ain't you gonna do something about it? Quiet, more. I'm praying for rain. <laughs> trouble, Paul. Willie, our youngest young and fell down the well this morning. Well, don't worry, Ma. We got eleven more. <laughs> yep, I seed he was a missing when I started to fix him breakfast. Hmm. I bet he'll show up just when I'm eating his egg. <laughs> Pa, I sure wish Grandpa wouldn't sit there fast to sleep with his feet on the stove. Why, Ma? Oh, Hit gives the neighbors the wrong impression. My cooking ain't that bad. Sure wish he'd take off them rubber soled shoes or else he'd keep his feet off in the stove. 
Why? Does that hurt anything more? Yeah, Pa, he's got his feet vulcanized to the pancake. <laughs> Gosh, no wonder. Yesterday I ate the first pancake I ever saw with Goodyear stamped on it. <laughs> Here, Pa, here's a glass of milk to start the day. Oh, Ma, I don't like that stuff. Now, I'll drink it, Pa. Everybody likes milk. Even the cows like it. What makes you think cows like it? Well, I sure have a terrible time of getting it away from them. <laughs> Pa, here comes Judy's dumb boyfriend, Lukey, up on her porch. How do you I'm okay. Did you do that? Slow down. Easy, boy. Now, what's all the first about? Well, I sure had a terrible time yesterday. I was in a couple of accidents, and I nearly got killed twice. Lugie, once would have been enough. <laughs> well, I was in a collision and an explosion. I think it was anyway. Lukey, you don't even know the difference betwixt the two. Oh, I sure do. In a collision, there you are. But in an explosion, where are you? <laughs> Lukey, you sure are dumb. Why don't you pack up and go where the rest of the morons are? Well, shucks, what could a feller like me do in Washington? <laughs> If you folks will excuse me, I'm going into the room and court Judy. By dingy dongies, I sure do love that there girl, boy. <laughs> Ma, if you ask me, Lukey is wandering in his mind. Oh, don't worry, Pa. He won't go very far. <laughs> He sure is crazy about our Judy, ain't he? Yep. Won't it be nice when they get married up? Don't you want a little air? When he's here, I'd rather have a little air wick. <laughs> oh, let's get the chores done, Pa. I'll milk the goat and you get Grandpa off in the stove. Yeah. Getting so ain't no rest. And, Mr. Manfield, that's how I talk about the folks back home on my radio show. Fantastic. Incredible. Miss Canova, do you mean to tell me that in this day and age there are people like that? Oh, shucks, yeah. See, they're what you call real down-to-earth pioneer stock. Ah, yes. Planters of the seed, tillers of the soil. I'll wager they're real dirt farmers. They sure are. Everybody says they're the dirtiest farmers in Cactus. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Canova, I can't begin to tell you how impressed I am. One moment you sing like a backwoods bobolink, the next you display unusual histrionic talents. Young woman, my mind is made up. I'm going to manage your career. I'll direct every activity of your waking moments. I'll be at your side constantly. I'll guide you. I'll mold you. I'll be your Svengali. I'll be your Trillbilly. <laughs> Gosh, I can see it all. Why, I'll be like a butterfly coming out of a raccoon. <laughs> yes, yes, together we'll go to the best places in Hollywood. Together we'll dine and dance. And you'll do exactly as I say. You'll be my puppet on a string. I'll be your puppy on a string? Well, get my dog collar and call me Lassie. <laughs> Look 
what I've got. A box of the new 1948 Super Suds. Lady, are you going to be happy? No other soap in the world can wash clothes whiter or get out more dirt than the new Extra Sudsy 1948 Super Suds. Tell me more. The new 1948 Super Suds gives Extra Suds. The Suds do the work. You need no bleach. All you need is the new 1948 Super Suds with Extra Suds for Extra Whiteness. Colgate Palm Olive Pete brings you the sudsiest Super Suds of all time. Just one box of this new 1948 Super Suds can fill a trolley car to overflowing with suds. Buy a box at your grocer's and carry home a carload of suds. Super Suds now gives more suds, extra suds for whiter duds. No other soap can wash clothes whiter, get out more dirt or wash them brighter. Now back to Judy Canova and the sportsman and the beautiful Irving Berlin ballad, What'll I Do? What'll I do when you Judy Canova Show is written by Fred Fox and Henry Hooper with John Ward and is produced and directed by Joe Rines. This is Howard Petrie asking you to use Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair and the new 1948 Super Suds with extra suds for extra whiteness. Now, here's Judy. Thank you, Howard. Folks, it was awfully nice being with you tonight and I hope we'll all be together again next Saturday night. In the meantime, please don't forget the two products that bring us together each week. Halo Shampoo and Super Sud, the bestest in the world. This is Judy Canova from Hollywood singing. Go to sleepy little baby. Go to sleepy little baby. When you wake your fatty, fatty cake and ride a shiny little pony. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste cleans teeth better. Colgate's cleans teeth thoroughly, safely, reveals natural sparkle and beauty. And scientific tests prove that in seven out of ten cases, Colgate Dental Cream instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. See if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate's America's favorite toothpaste. After you eat and before every date, 
Use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Stay tuned to Kay Kaiser with his comedy of errors in the College of Musical Knowledge, which follows immediately. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.